Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Dio. I'm an avid duner at the Imperial Sand Dunes and I've been asked by the American Sand Association to be your host for this safety DVD. So please join me as we run down some of the important facts and information that you're going to need to be a safer duner. Hi, I'm Mike Poole. I'm the State Director for the Bureau of Land Management here in California. BLM has a variety of mandates that we're responsible for, including our recreation program. And in the Imperial Sand Dunes Recreation Area in Southern California, is one of the most popular settings in all of BLM. Thousands of visitors come to the Imperial Sand Dunes each and every year. An important part in managing all our users and our visitors is our safety program. In recent years, we've developed new management prescriptions to improve upon the quality of the visitor services that we provide to our users. But the most important aspect of, of our management prescriptions is user safety. This DVD that um, is being distributed covers new safety uh, applications that we would like you to pay very close attention to when you're out recreating in the Imperial Sand Dunes. It's a very, very important aspect of the quality of management that we all hope to advance and improve upon this particular location. First and foremost, every duning vehicle must have a whip and a red or orange flag about 6 by 12 inches. Your flag must be 8 feet high from the ground and attached to within 10 inches of the tip of the whip. Whips and flags are vital to your safety and the safety of others in the dunes. When you're out duning and approach the top of a dune, your flag is going to be the first thing that other duners will see. The flag will allow other duners to know you are approaching and helps to avoid a possible collision. If your flag is broken, while you're duning it is not going to give the other duners the warning that we need to avoid a collision. There's a 15 mile per hour speed limit when you're near camps and access roads. Anytime you go within 50 feet of a campsite, slow down. We love to go to the big hills like Olds or Competition Hill and watch everybody, but slow down when you get there. There's a lot of traffic in these areas and we all need to cool it to be safe. Duners who sand people and pull wheelies in crowded areas think they look good, but everyone else thinks they look like idiots. Go slow, let everyone check out your rig instead. And remember, the 15 mile per hour speed limit applies to the sand highway and crowded places like Competition Hill, Oldsmobile Hill, and Gecko Road. Many camps have little kids riding around them. These mini duners are not looking where they are going as well as we do because they're young and just learning to ride. It's up to us to watch out for them and motorhomes and trailers can block your view of your fellow duners so be careful near campsites. And now we have a message from Greg Biffle, professional NASCAR driver in the number 16 car. Hi, I'm Greg Biffle. Hi, I'm Ted Jones. At all the NASCAR tracks, I drive my National Guard Ford at over 200 miles an hour. But remember, on all the sand highways, and especially in the campground, the speed limit is 15 miles an hour. So remember folks, keep it safe, make it a safe environment for everybody. When we dune in a group, there are a couple of things to do. Always have the most experienced duner lead. Never lead faster than your group can follow. Every duner is responsible to watch out for the duner in back of them. That way, if somebody gets stuck or breaks, the duner in front of them will notice that nobody's behind them and stop. Stop on a high enough dune so that your group in front of you can see you when they look back. The next duner will see nobody's behind them and stop to look for you and so on. That way, the group doesn't get broken up into two groups and nobody gets lost. All kinds of people dune at Imperial Sand Dunes. Experienced duners know never to dune alone. If you get stuck or break down, you're going to be out of luck if you're by yourself. So never dune by yourself farther than you're willing to walk. While you're out duning, if you see someone stop by themselves, 
drive by and at least give them a thumbs up sign when they see you. If they don't need your help, they'll give you the thumbs up sign or indicate that they don't need your help. Always ask, because you never know. You might be able to help someone who's in trouble, and someday you may be the one stranded and hoping someone will stop and ask if you need any help. When you're out duning, it makes sense to bring along things that you would need if you break down. Bring enough tools and supplies to make minor repairs, because having them could keep you duning instead of being towed back to camp. And anyone who's been towed in the sand knows that that is not fun. We're duning in the desert, so it makes sense to bring water to drink. You can also clean a bead on a pop tire or get the sand out of your eyes. A tow strap comes in very handy. Just be prepared for trouble, and you will keep having fun no matter what happens. Some items to carry with you. Water tools and spare parts, a tow strap and first aid kit, a fire extinguisher, flashlight, and an air pump or air compressor and tire repair kit, a jacket or a space blanket, maps or a GPS, sunblock and sunscreen, a driver's license or other acceptable identification, an insurance card, and anything else that you might need that we haven't thought of. Know where you are when you're duning. Many of us use GPS as a global positioning system to navigate the dunes. These inexpensive devices use satellites to tell you where you are, and they come in very handy. You can also tell where you are by certain landmarks, but if you're not sure where you are, climb a tall dune and look around. Maps are available at the ranger station and some of the vendors at the Imperial Sand Dunes. You can also find these maps in the menu selection of this DVD. If you're in the northern dunes, on the east side of the dunes you will see the railroad tracks and the road next to them. Behind them are the mountains. If you head towards the two sharp peaks you will get to the railroad tracks. At night there are two red lights on these mountains so you will know where they are. To the north is Highway 78 and that's what you drove in on. If you see the highway, the sand highway runs next to it. Sometimes you can see the Osborne campgrounds from the dunes and that makes a good landmark. On the west side of the dunes is Gecko Road, Keyhole and all the campsites around there. The southern side of the dunes is nothing but dunes, so don't go that way if you're trying to get out of the dunes. If you want to drive the biggest and the softest dunes of Imperial Sand Dunes, that is where they are. The electrical towers go right along the Mexican border west of the dunes and can be lined up when you're in the dunes south of I-8 in the Buttercup area. This allows you to be able to tell where the Mexican border is located. The area is bordered by the freeway on the north side and by the canal on the east side. At night you can see the glow of the lights southeast of the dunes and they are from the town of Algondones in Mexico. A landmark for Ogilvy is the radio tower that is right at the campgrounds. A landmark for the Gordon's Well area is a communication tower in the area where Paradise is located, which is west of the canal. And at night you can see the marker lights on this tower and the marker light at the bridge that is used to enter Dune Buggy Flats camping area. You have a canal along the freeway which forms the south border, a canal which goes along the west side all the way to the Highway 78 up north. There's a gate and a bridge which is called the Five Mile Drop just west of the dunes in Patton Valley. You can also see the light on the top of the radio tower at Ogilvy at night. Camping areas can be crowded and that can make it difficult for you to find your camp. Some of us put flags or balloons up so we can easily find our campsite when it's crowded. A light on the camp markers makes it very easy for you to find your camp at night.
know what's in front of you before you get there. Watch out for obstacles that could hurt you. Any dune could have a drop off on the other side. If you go flying off the top of a dune too fast, you could crash big time. If you're not sure about a dune, angle over it slow enough to find out what's over there. There could be people or other vehicles on the other side, so watch out and be careful. There are holes in the dunes commonly called witch's eyes. The wind sometimes carves these holes in the sand and they can be anywhere in the dunes. Some are big enough to trap a buggy and some are small enough to tear a wheel off if you hit them wrong. You've been warned. You may have noticed small tracks often referred to as snail tracks that have been made near the campsites. Kids riding quads usually make these tracks from riding in them all day long, which creates bank turns in the sand. Even if you don't see these tracks because you're speeding, they can cause you to lose control of your vehicle, resulting in serious injuries. Remember, the 15 mile per hour speed limit is for your safety and applies to camp areas even if there aren't any people camping there. Many times these kid tracks are in areas where people have left and gone home. If you observe the 15 mile per hour speed limit in all camp areas, whether there are campers there or not, you will be able to see these kid tracks and avoid them. The kid tracks stay even after we go home. A lot of us like to do wheelies and jumps. This can be hard on your equipment. But if you do them, keep one thing in mind, stay in control of your vehicle. Wheelies are fun, but remember, you may have blind spots in front of you. Watch out for other duners and obstacles and make sure that you have a clear path in front of you. Hoods and solid floors on buggies may obstruct your vision even more. So know your limitations. Use caution and just have fun. Jumping requires skill, experience, and the proper vehicle. Don't try this until you have enough knowledge of what you are doing to do it safely. Always use a spotter and watch the other side of that dune anytime you jump, because you never know what's on the other side of that dune. Make sure you and your spotter know what the signals are the spotter will use to warn you not to jump, and keep an eye on the spotter as you approach the jump. Never drive a ride over your head. Driving faster than your ability is dangerous to you and dangerous to everyone else. It's better to slow down a little bit and get back in your comfort zone than it is to risk crashing or maybe hitting someone else. Not worth the risk. The more you do, the better you will get and the faster you'll be able to go. 
Don't overdrive your vehicle. There are some fast machines out there, and if yours isn't fast enough to keep up, don't push it. You'll eventually break something or crash. So know your limits and stay within them. No matter how fast you are, there will always be someone faster. And now, we have a message from Greg Biffle, professional NASCAR driver in the number 16 car. Hi, I'm Greg Biffle. Hi, I'm Ted Jones. Make sure you know the limits of your vehicle and yourself while duning. Never attempt a maneuver that can endanger yourself, your passengers, or the environment. Remember, folks, whenever you drive, make sure you know your limits. Stay safe, and that way everybody goes home. times in the dunes when the sun is directly overhead. This causes a lack of shadows and therefore a lack of depth perception. So slow down when your visibility is diminished. Dust can also impair your vision and make it difficult for you to see and difficult for others to see you. I don't care how many lights you have, you cannot see at night as well as you can during the day. So night rides are not the time to drop the hammer and drive over your head in the dunes. You need to watch for cross traffic when you're out riding. There are many places where one trail or path crosses another one. If you just look straight ahead and the other driver is doing the same thing, it could be dangerous. You need to scan from side to side when you're in these areas. When in doubt, just slow down or stop. Well that's about it. Thank you for taking the time to watch this DVD. I hope you got something out of it that will make you a safer duner. Please be safe and enjoy the dunes and help us keep our dunes open so that we can all ride them for a long time. And don't forget to bring the most important thing to help keep you safe in the dunes. Common sense. Don't leave your camp without it. Hi, I'm Ray Loera. Sheriff of Imperial County. I'm here to welcome all of the families that are coming to the Imperial Valley to enjoy the Glamis experience. We have been working with the ASA over the past few years to make this the safest environment that we can for all the families that come here. We also want you to be aware that we want to work with you to make this experience the best that you can have. We want you to be aware that there are safety issues, as I'm sure you are aware, that we need to have you check your safety equipment. The ASA has, uh, has been very helpful in putting out uh, information along with the Imperial County Sheriff's Office and other agencies uh, that are in this area. We need for you to uh, be aware that we are here to help each other. The Sheriff's Office is going to ask you to do some things and they are for your safety. We also want you to know that we are here to help you if there's anything that we can do to help you have this uh, be a better experience. The Sheriff's Office, in conjunction with you, the ASA, and all of those people that come to Imperial Valley to enjoy this great experience, are going to be working together. Again, I, I, I want to welcome you, and uh, please be safe, and I hope that we can make this the best experience that you have ever had for recreation. Thank you very much. And now, we have a message from Greg Biffle, professional NASCAR driver in the number 16 car. Hi, I'm Greg Biffle. Hi, I'm Ted Jones. While we're all at the sand dunes to have a good time, remember, all the DUI laws are the same off-road as they are on-road. So be a champion. Don't drive after consuming alcohol. Remember, folks, if you drink and drive, you will go to jail. This safety message was brought to you by the American Sand Association. If you are not already a member, please join today and help us be safe in the dunes and keep the Imperial Sand Dunes open for all of us to enjoy. Membership is free and you can find membership applications on our website at americansandassociation.org.